This place feels magical. Every tree I pass, every stone I step over, it feels like I'm entering a different world. It's beautiful. I've driven three and a half hours to a place I've never been to before, to a place I, I don't really know very much about. I've hiked in here, deep into this thick, moss-covered woodland that's, that just feels enchanted. It's incredible. I found a place to set up the tent. I'm taking my time with this one, guys. I'm taking my time. I'm trying to take it all in. Just the, the trickling of this small brook that's nearby, right near the tent. The trees, the colours, the greens. It's just so green. Everything's just so rich. Such a mixture as well of, of trees and diversity of nature. I'm going to enjoy this one. I already know. I've, only, I've not been here long and I know, I already know I'm going to enjoy this one. So yeah, come and join me on this adventure in this enchanted forest. I'm going to get some food on in a minute, get a fire going. It's dark in less than 40 minutes now. It gets dark. And even then, although it will be very dark where I am, I'll still have that sound of the bubbling brook. Just awesome. Absolutely awesome. And that is the Lavu setup. The canvas Polish military Lavu. Two double pon two ponchos basically doubled up, buttoned together. But the surroundings is what this trip is all about, guys. It is awesome. Really, really pretty. Thick, dense woodland. Look at that over there. Just covered in moss. The lighting in here is unbelievable as well. The river's flowing right here. Goes right past where the tent is, pretty much. I've seen some small wild brown trout, but I didn't bring any fishing gear. Then it curves its way around there. Look at all that moss on the trees. It's around the corner. Past that. And then it runs over the back there beyond that sort of ditch and this is where camp is look at this that is B E A beautiful amazing spot loads of Norway spruce around as well big old Norway spruce here it's just the setting of all settings it's like Lord of the Rings it is literally like Lord of the Rings So what I'm doing is just creating a raft or a fire lay. I've cleared the moss from the ground. This is absolutely soaking because obviously the river's nearby and this is a damp climate we live in. So it's pretty damp here. I'm not worried about the floor burning or the moss burning or anything like that. But what I've done is just create that fire lay to help lift, because this is cold and damp, it's gonna to wanna to put my fire up. These dry sticks should help lift that fire up. And then I've got two sticks here to act as a brace that this one has a kind of fork to it so that's quite helpful to to raise this up this fire up and all it'll do if i switch that around like that actually so the brace goes there i've got a little bit of tinder in the tinder bag this is hopefully just it's going to be a one fire job if it doesn't work then i'm pretty stuffed and because there's no birch bark or anything around here it'd be interesting to see what i can do after that um, Anyway, that's gonna go like that, act as the brace. Then I've got these really, really small, thin, pencil lead thin sticks, which will hopefully go on top, blow it, and then I've got the rest of the wood ready to go. That's the plan anyway.
this is literally all I've got. These were from Dustin's Woodland ages ago. Myself and Hazy did a trip there. And uh, yeah, we Dustin has so much cedar in the, the woodland he's at, which is great for tinder, making a tinder bundle, but if it's damp or the slightest bit rotten, it makes it really difficult. So I'm just trying to break the fibres up a bit first, just to make it easier to break, to fluff up into a tinder bundle. Darkness is approaching, I keep boosting the settings on the camera, but it's going to get to a point where it's going to be too dark without a light. I've only got, I don't, I don't fancy doing too much nighttime filming actually on this trip really, I want to save it for the day because this, rather than just waffle away at night like I do sometimes, I'd rather save it for you guys so you can see you know, what it looks like properly in a day here, because it's amazing. I really hope this goes up. Worth the three hour drive, three and a half hour drive, to get this silence. Well worth it. Let's see if we can do this in, in one go. Might be an epic fail. Epic fail? Harry Potter? There we go, it's a good bit. No, doesn't want to. Okay. Interesting. I had a feeling it would be like this. It's been hard to get this established. Go on. Just need a couple of twigs to burn. Come on. I think we're there. Oh, I found a bit of birch bark as well. I'm going to pop the billy can on the side there. It's burning well.
It's so nice. I'm sat, I'm sat on the stool right now, and that's the view. As I open the door to the levee, just got that river flowing, meandering around the corner in this little peninsula bit. I just went to get some more firewood. It's all dry. It's very mossy, but it all seems to be dry underneath because we've not had rain for a while, so. Oh, it's good to be out. January, what are we now? January 10th. Still fairly mild temperatures. It's going down to, it's been three degrees today, Celsius. Going down to, I think it's minus, minus one or around zero tonight. I don't think it's gonna get zero from the feel in the air. <clears throat> I reckon it will stay two degrees, one degree maybe. Who knows, we might have a frost on the tent in the morning. I like using the old canvas tent in the winter just because it maintains that heat so much better inside the tent. It doesn't, you don't get the condensation problems as much and uh, it does, it stays hot in the winter and cool in the summer. It's very dark as well in there, it's very black. So I tend to sleep better in there, but I struggle to get up in the mornings because it's so black in there. But this is, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome, this trip. Like I, say, like I said uh, in a few videos ago, I wanted to travel around more, see more of the country. And yeah, three and a half hours away now. I've gone slightly further west to where I normally am. And it's, yeah, <laughs> the change in scenery, as you guys will know, is completely different. Completely different. There's a lot more rivers here, a lot more small brooks and rivers. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's so peaceful, so peaceful. Where I am, I'm north, I'm Hampshire, so central South England, and I'm North Hampshire. I live in the north of the county. It's so busy there. It's so busy. It's just so many planes and roads and motorways. There's, there's two or three, maybe four motorways that go through Hampshire. And then there's the trains as well and planes. It's just so much noise. And because I'm in that commuting distance to London still, there's the towns are just exploding. Population is exploding. I want to move west. That's what I want to do with my with Emmy, my wife, and Jax. We've said for a while we've wanted to move west. West is best, as they say. And I've come west. I'm three hours west now, three and a half hours west, and this is nice. I definitely like this. But yeah, I don't want to move too far west, where you know I'm, I'm out of touch with my my family, my friends. Unfortunately, I'd love to, I'd love to live off grid. I'd love to do what Mike from MCQ did and just sod off to Sweden. I would absolutely love to do that, and I would snap at it if I could. But I've got responsibilities and commitments back home with family and things like that. So, you know, that that's life. That is life at the end of the day. Em's got her family and her little sister. She wants to be close to. So yeah, that's. I think that's fair enough. It's not fair of me to ask her to just up sticks and leave the country and go into the wilderness as much as I'd love to do that with her. It's not fair on her. Yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, we'll, maybe we'll meet halfway and we'll, we'll, <clears throat> we'll go west. That's what we're looking. We're looking now. We are looking now at going west. We're looking at houses. I'm going to read a book by the fire, enjoy the outside while it's still fairly mild, and then hit the sheets. Or go to bed, as they say. Catch up with you guys tomorrow. Well, I've woken up to another day in paradise. It's another beautiful morning in this enchanted forest. I slept pretty well. I did sleep well. I woke up, I think, twice in the night. I wasn't cold at all. I let the fire burn out, which was fine, because I, you know, I was so warm in the tent in the sleeping bag. But this is just beautiful to wake up to this. I, I, I kind of hope I'm trying. I hope I'm doing it justice on the camera. I'm trying to. I'm really focusing on the on the shots and putting effort into the shots, and I, you know, to try and make you guys feel as close to this as possible, so that you can experience what I'm experiencing. So I have taken a lot of time doing the filming shots and less time talking. 
so you you know I've not sort of run through the camp and what I've done I've sort of focused just on trying to bring you here to this environment as much as possible so hopefully that's hopefully I've done that in a way it's just it's one of those places you have to be here to experience it it's just magical so we had some rain in the night as you can probably tell from the shots of the tent earlier uh, it's very damp where this moss is everywhere it just absorbs all that water and everything is absolutely soaked it rained for about two hours I'd say so I've got food wise I've got a, a, some porridge but I've also got some breakfast bars so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and light the fire get it going but if not I'm not gonna waste my time to collect resources and, and do it all again because I want to be able to film around here a bit more so I've got breakfast in that sense with the food bars but I'd like to get a, I'd like to get a coffee on if possible so we'll try we're trying to get fire going I've just got a tiny bit of cedar bark uh, cedar tindle cedar tinder bundle left tongue twist try and get it going and um, if we can I'll get a tea on or a coffee on if not we'll go and explore it either way it's a win-win for you guys okay so in the tinder bag I'm pretty sure I kept one bit of um, cedar bark yeah it's tiny so that's that's not a lot that's not going to be able to completely get a fire going I do have some char cloth but again that's this would be better so I've got that much tinder left but also I was thinking about this the sandwich uh, the sandwich the bread roll I had yesterday which I got from the local bakers around here it comes in a white paper it, well white paper so I'm thinking I might bundle this up and just try and light the tinder bundle like that and it's gonna be a real flash burn and then I've got some really tiny twigs here which I'm hoping if some of them catch I spent a lot of time this morning trying to find the dry ones if some of them catch then we we could be in for a success I only need to boil the kettle I don't need a huge roaring fire so I've got all my resources prepped I've got bigger sticks here even bigger sticks over here this is as thick as I need to go to boil a kettle let's give it a go if it fails it doesn't matter I'm in a place of beauty I don't mind I can go hungry for the morning Nice. Close to no cigar. Done. Okay. very tentative. I don't think this is going to work. I think the wood's too wet. Come on, sticks. You can do this. Oh, 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 oh. We may be into something here. We have flame. I think we're there, lads. I think we're there.
So this is the this is the stool that I was on about that my buddy Tim made me made for me. This, this essentially it's a stool cover. You have to make the stool yourself out of sticks. But I, I absolutely love this. It, this is what it folds down to. So I've, I've knotted it up here where I've lashed it. You saw me do that earlier the other day. That's all set, ready to to sort of cinch down and pull down on a stick. So I'll leave that there. The rest of the cordage I just wind up like this. Obviously you can do this this your own way. But it's handy to keep the cordage with the seat cover itself. Just makes makes it easier and then you know the exact length of cordage that you've got. Those sticks can go back into the woods. And there's the, there's the seat cover essentially. So it's it's just a triangle and you put three sticks, it's got three pockets, and you put you lash your three sticks, make a tripod and put them into this these pockets here. Super cool piece of kit this, very simple. Really, really durable, really well made by Tim. I'll put a link to Tim's site in the description. Easy to fold up then. You just push all these down and then fold each triangle in on itself. And there you have it. That is essentially your bushcraft seat. Cool piece of kit. Well that's it for this overnighter. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I have definitely, definitely enjoyed my time out here. It's been incredible. i say probably up there with one of the best woodland overnighters I've ever had. Just so, so peaceful. I want to do it all again. I want to stay here for a week. Anyway, I've got to get back. Thanks so much for watching this episode guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope to see you soon back out there in the woods. Cheers. Mm -hmm.